What's up guys? It's me, Jordy, back at you with another video. Um, uh, recap from the last video, the f sweeper, s street sweeper, whatever you want to call it. I got some pretty, uh, positive feedback, uh, on the comment section about how I handled the situation with the gentleman who came and helped me. Um, the tie down wasn't horrible. You know, I, I did it the way he recommended to see how I like it. I used to do it that way per se as well. But now I like to put it along the welded ring on the trailer, loop it around and then ratchet it. Because, you know, I've been told by several people um, that that's the correct way to do it. And it's safer because it's more welded and that's the purpose of the circular um, welded area. So right now, currently, oh, actually to finish that story off right quick, my parents were the ones who finished taking the load to Corpus Christi. They uh, took off early in the morning, got there around 7, 8 in the morning, got offloaded easy, and now they came back to the house, and now it's my turn to go do another pickup. Right now, I'm about to go pick up a 40-foot container. I'm not sure if it's a 40-foot or 220s. If it's a, ooh, that got right into the engine. If it's a high cube or standard, but we'll see here in a little bit, in about roughly 45 minutes when I get there. So, uh, I'll probably be making this a little bit of a how I personally tie the containers to my trailer. Um, I like to use three straps, four inch straps of course, and a chain at the back. And then that counts as four tie down points, but also since it's a gooseneck and it has like a headache rack you could say, but since the container sits flush with the headache rack, that also counts as a tie down point apparently. So in total I got five points of contact holding it to the trailer and not letting it move back and forth so I'll just quit talking right here get a little bit of a quick road view about to get on 59 and then see you when we get there to the container yard Okay, so we're here at the container yard. The drive here was not too bad. I put on my seatbelt, although I'm in the container yard. That was okay. So, in the container yard, um, I've been to this container yard several times already, and different container yards have different rules. This one specifically, you're not allowed to go up to the window unless you have your safety vest on, which I forgot, but luckily I had remembered right before I took like three steps away from my truck, I turned around and came back and got it. And this one in particular does not want, do not want you to have an electronic device like a cell phone, headphones, nothing like that, none of the sort. They want you to keep all of that in the truck. They want you to have everything written down on a piece of paper, your pickup number, DOT number, MC number, license plate, where you're going, all this good stuff. So, you know, if you've been there before, you, you kind of get accustomed to how certain places like to do certain things so here i am got everything set up she laughed the the lady attending me she laughed because she's like you remember don't you like, yeah it took me a little bit of a minute but i remembered but yeah so now we're here uh there's a tad bit of a line in front of me two that gotta get off loaded i gotta get loaded so let's see how long this takes so yeah we'll catch you whenever we're getting loaded and then i'll probably do like a quick little explanation on how i uh load up and how I tie down these, these containers.
but this is all I use to tie down my containers. One 20 foot chain, chain binder. Hit it correct, apparently that's what it's called. Three 30 foot straps, three four inch binders. Let's see what we look. Step in the puddle. What I like to do is hook it around the rub rail, give it one twist, and then just throw it. That's the way, that's the way I do it. It's not that hard. two, three straps, and a chain in the back, that's four securement, and then the edit crack that equals five. Um, the reason I put a little bit of a twist on the straps is if they go straight, they start flapping, and I've actually had one rip from the top. So with these little twists, about a 180 twist, it keeps it from vibrating and keeps the noise out and it saves the straps. Now for the chain, chain it back here, onto the hook, straight across, and then to this little contraption right here. I'll explain that in a second. So the reason I put the ratchet on the side of the trailer was we've taken off the hooks on one side of the chain and not misplaced them, we just haven't put them back yet. So that's why I have to put the binder on the side, but I also put that bungee at the bottom to keep it from flying open, but I mean, everything's still good and legal. So now let's get out of here and let's move on forward. All right guys, so hopefully with the, there wasn't too much like a bad audio with me trying to show you how I throw the how I throw the straps and stuff on the container. So, you know, it's very simple. Just hook it on to the rub rail. I know some people don't like the rub rail. You hook it on straight to the trailer, been through that, or not been through that, but we've had a discussion and uh, one of the people in the comments, I forgot his name, but we talked back and forth for a little bit and he actually showed me like the books and the laws. So it's kind of a gray zone per se, but, you know we'll see but anyways that's how I tie my containers that's how I was taught to tie my containers and I've done it for a good while and I've passed way stations been random DOT inspected with containers and I always do it this way I have always done it this way and nobody's told me anything so I guess I just been lucky or blessed but we'll see what happens but anyways hopefully you can hear the audio if not then 
I'll probably try to have to redo the video or something like that. But anyways, thank you for watching. Like, comment, subscribe. Let me know what you think. And yeah, thank you.